So if you know me, you know that I love quilt labels. I label all my quilts, usually with machine embroidered, but sometimes hand embroidered labels. But there's not always time for that. Sometimes you want a quick way out. And the answer to that is fabric markers. So I have gone on Amazon and I have purchased a pile of fabric markers. We are going to write on a white Kona cotton with all of these markers and then I am going to stick that piece of fabric through the laundry as many times as I possibly can and we're going to keep track and see how these markers hold up through washing. A note about how we wash our quilts. I have two kids, I have a dog that loves quilts, my quilts get washed a lot and they don't get washed on like the gentle cycle. I machine wash and dry in hot water <laughs> all of my quilts. I use wool batting, I use cotton batting, I use different kinds of fabrics and I've never had any trouble. So don't be afraid to wash your quilts. So let's go through the markers I purchased. First up, we have the Crafts for All fabric markers. These seemed really popular on Amazon. I haven't ever used them, but they do have um, a fine tip and a broad tip, which is nice. I bought the pack of two black markers and it looks like they're both double, double tipped. That's pretty fine. Oof, and that is quite broad. That's like a highlighter. We also just got Crayola fabric fine line markers, and this was kind of a rainbow assortment. So I'll be testing all of the black markers. I may doodle around the names or something with some of the other colors just out of curiosity, but I feel like black is kind of the color that you're gonna use most often and hopefully will hold in fabric a little bit better. So we'll be testing this. These are the fine line Crayola markers. I have two kinds of these tulip markers. These are dual tip fabric markers, and these are fabric paint markers. I don't know what the difference is, but they both say permanent. We're gonna see. If I have to guess, I'm gonna say that the fabric paint markers might hold up a little bit better. Okay, this is interesting. This says apply marker to pre-washed fabric. Machine wash inside out on the delicate cycle. That doesn't bode well for our paint markers, our tulip fabric paint markers. These say machine washable with uh, no reservations listed on the label. So maybe I was wrong, maybe these will hold it better. The final two I have are Sharpie markers. There's just this Sharpie rub-a-dub. It says stays permanent through washing. And then these are brush tip fabric markers. And this does say for best results, machine wash in cold water and hang dry. We're gonna wash all these labels like I wash my quilt. So, my plan is to grab some white Kona and kind of make a spreadsheet on the fabric. And I'm gonna write the name of all these markers and then maybe the date or some kind of marking so that I can keep track of how many washes they've all been through and then I'll come back and show you before we put it in the wash for the first time. So I have finished writing with all of my fabric markers and I did take the time to heat set them. Even though the instructions for all of them didn't include heat setting, I figured it was a good step to do and some of them did call for that. So now that I have this all done, you can see I just have one column of writing and I have all this empty space. I am going to kind of generally repeat what I have done here after like one wash and a couple washes and we'll kind of see how many times I can get this through the wash. And then we will reassess and see how all of these markers hold up over repeated washing. So we're back. It has actually been quite a lot of time since I filmed that intro and I ended up washing our little sample uh, five times. So here are my results. This is the first column that I did on that very first day. And then I washed it twice and did another column and then two more washes and another column and then one wash and this far right column that actually is totally fresh. I haven't washed it at all. So this should look uh, very much like the first column in the last part of the video. So let's talk about our results. 
Some of these markers held up really well in the washes, and some of them were real disappointments. I would say the number one disappointment was this Sharpie Rub-A-Dub marker. And I was actually really surprised by that because this marker was made to write on clothing labels and go through the wash. And the bleeding was just really just out of hand. Like, that is terrible. If that was on the back of your quilt, you would be really sad. Um, other markers were really pleasantly surprising. The Stained by Sharpie, which my initial reaction was that it was like a little too like 80s crazy fluorescent, actually faded to like a really nice, lovely kind of standard rainbow. And I was really impressed with how it held up. It's not super black anymore, but it's also been through the wash many times. I don't think any of these markers really maintained that perfectly black look um, to them after they've been in the wash. Maybe with the exception of the Tulip Fabric Paint markers, this was, I think, my biggest surprise. After washing, there's virtually no fading, and the paint really soaked into the fabric. It almost looks like this portion of the fabric was printed with these colors in it. I'm really impressed. You can see like this is the one that is fresh and this one has been in the wash five times and there's really very little color loss like between those reds. They are pretty much exactly the same. So I was really impressed with those fabric markers and if I wanted to do a like drawing or coloring or piece of artwork on a piece of fabric that I would incorporate into the surface of a quilt, I would absolutely use these fabric markers. They are thick to use for a label on the back of the quilt, but these colors can't be beat. So if I was going to purchase one set of markers, it would likely be this Stained by Sharpie. I think the black stayed reasonably black and the colors faded nicely. I would avoid the Sharpie Rub-A-Dub. My big disappointment with the tulip markers was although the fine point was fine and held up okay, the color loss on the lighter values was pretty substantial. The orange and yellow and even this kind of like aqua color are really hard to see after five washes. On the other side of that marker, the kind of larger flex point tip, like the broad stroke, that marker tip really degraded during this process. I only used these markers to make this sample, like I wasn't out coloring my clothes in between <laughs> filming. And even by right here, it doesn't really show in the actual writing, but here I'd only written about 10 words with that marker and it had already degraded to the point where the tip is kind of permanently bent and there were kind of some strings hanging off of it and you could just tell the abrasion of writing on fabric was really getting to that marker. So I don't think that these markers would last particularly long. Like you couldn't do a lot of projects. The fine point, maybe you could get a lot more use out of them, but that fine point is very fine and it might be more susceptible to kind of washing out. I was pleasantly surprised by the Crayolas. They did fade, obviously, all the markers did, but they did maintain quite a lot of color. Uh, the, the black really faded to a light gray. But if you're working with some kids and you want them to be able to color on some fabric, these were the only markers that were advertised as non-toxic, so they held up pretty well for Crayola markers. I didn't expect too much and I was pleasantly surprised. So that was my test. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this and I think it was really pretty informative. I am going to throw away those Sharpie Rub-A-Dub markers and I'm going to keep those stained by Sharpie markers around. So I hope this gives you an easy option to make some quilt labels. Um, you definitely don't need to hand embroider all your quilt labels. I certainly don't and I'm going to be making use of these uh, markers for some a little more rough and tumble quilts that I make. So I hope you guys have a lovely week and happy quilting. Well, I'm going to...